Going from a 17 up front to a 22. Ike, it looks like you oiled yourself. You blowed up. What's up everybody? Today on Cars and Cameras we're making some huge upgrades to our Suzuki GS450 racing mower. We're going to be installing front brakes, but probably none like you've ever seen before, to give the mower four-wheel brakes. We also need to re-gear it for much higher top speed and adjust the steering and make some other livability modifications to make it handle a lot better. And then we're going to be entering this thing into a burnout competition. So let's get started. This is pretty wild. So it's not really common to have a go-kart with front brakes. Yes, there are a few out there, but we designed this thing uh, with, without having front brakes in mind. But now we want to do uh, burnouts or, and, and also have better stopping power. So to keep this packaging with this six inch wheel, we're gonna have to go with something a little bit unusual. We're gonna be going with drum brakes on this. So we got, we got dropping stuff. We've got uh, these cute little uh brake shoes we're gonna have to find a drum to go in the middle and we're gonna have to attach it to the hub in here and this is gonna go right in here look we're not even gonna have to paint it it's gonna match perfect and it's gonna work uh i think pretty decent the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to try to make the steering a little bit easier by moving this linkage a little bit further up towards the pivot point of the shaft that's going to make the steering a bit easier, but unfortunately we're going to lose a little bit of our uh, drift angle. Uh, but I think that'll be okay. It's just a small adjustment and maybe uh, it'll be a, a, a good compromise. Something in between. Keep a little drift angle and lighten up the steering. Beautiful. All right, so this is our current chain setup on this uh, racing mower that we have. We've used it on plenty of projects in the past, but unfortunately for this one, it's fixed with the only adjustability being this uh, rolling sprocket. So it's kind of it's kind of holding us back for a lot of gear changes. So we may have to. You may see a lot of a lot of rearranging of some of the stuff that we've done, but it's all it's all okay. Remember, it'll be fine. Once we get enough room and get it set up, we're going from a 17 up front to a 20 tooth, and then a 60 on the rear to probably a 54 from Go Power Sports. So we should be looking at 30% uh, more okay. speed, I'm a glad lot. You, I'm glad you did the math. A big chunk, it's cool. a guesstimation, but well, hey. much faster. Yep. How's it going, Mike? Good. I'm pretty much done with the oh. uh, steering. I just barely started. You making me look bad. Well. <laughs> I think it'll be okay. If not, we can go up like maybe one more slot. Do I need to go ahead and pre-drill that hole? Do you think? Not a bad idea. Yeah. Cause. Okay. And then test it. All right. Oh yeah. All right. So there's the difference. Good, good difference. Yep. All right. And see, you don't even have to weld them all the way. There's gonna be good welds. If you need a sprocket like this, you can pick one up yourself today in person or online at gopowersports.com. They have every, pretty much any sprocket you need. Since that one's already installed and this one might be a little easier to see, uh, right here near my left hand, you see how it's got the number of teeth that are on it? When you're lining up the sprocket and, re and bolting it back on, you want to be able to see the number. You don't want it like this or vice versa. You want to be able to see the number of teeth because that means that they're lined up on these edges right there properly. Another good thing to do when finally tightening up your sprocket is to go ahead and wrap the chain a full full wrap around it so that way it kind of keeps it right where it needs to be right before you snug it down. Yep, sometimes you can have just a little bit of slop and if you don't uh, get it perfectly lined up before you tighten it, you can have a little bit of excessive wear on your sprocket. So this is a good way to make sure you 
your sprocket last as long as it can. Okay. So pretty much just kind of do a cross pattern. There we go. Nice. So I got the steering linkage hooked up and we still have some uh, some drift angle, just not the drift angle. But it should be much easier to steer. It should be important. easier on the arms. So uh, you guys are going to enjoy driving this thing. Oh, you guys. Well, you know, what didn't bother me. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. There's oil under the seat. From what? Chain? Uh, well, we did have an oil leak the last time we drove this. Oh, yeah. Ike, it looks like you oiled yourself. Uh, there might have been a time or two. So now that the steering's done, I'm going to be working on the brakes. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out this hole and I'm going to put it over the existing spindle, which is a 5 8 hole. And I need to come up with a drum. So I think I need to go to the metal shop and find a drum with the right diameter. And then uh, we'll use the lathe to uh, cut it out, weld a use the lathe and make a nice drum for this brake. So you go to the metal store or you could check the uh, staircase. Yeah, I see a little excess up there. The odds of it fitting are kind of slim to none, boys. I mean, I'll check. All right, we got about 12 inches of, uh, or more. Hey, it's really close. Is it? Oh, it's seen, didn't it? It does have a seam. Hey, oh, well. we fit perfect. Hey, even the, even if can, there's a seam, we got the lathe. We can, yeah, we can use the lathe to uh, to uh, cut it. So yeah, this will work great, guys. It's gonna save us a lot of money. I don't know about time, but money. <laughs> I jammed this thing up. How much of this should I cut off? Just uh, enough for the drums, or? Uh, well, you gotta take maybe so. like an inch extra in case your yeah. cuts aren't straight. Because we need to chuck it up in the lathe and get the tool in there to smooth it out for the width of the brake pad. I probably okay. need to cut off as much as I can. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so here's our drum. Nobody and, died. Yeah, nobody got and hurt. The hood on the C10 is still okay. Yeah, so uh, it fits in here perfect. Uh, we do need to go a little bit wider, but uh, I think this is going to work pretty good. And it's going to, we're going to put a, uh, a cap on this and we're going to put like three bolts, three holes for the spindle on this. Uh, Go Power Sports spindle. And it'll be able to bolt onto the spindle. And uh, when you slide the wheel on with the drum attached, uh, it's gonna be good to go. Sweet, I can't wait. This is wild. Yeah. We're gonna tack in the, uh, I guess, the, what would you call that? Like the, st the stop tabs for the backing plate of the rotor? Yeah, it's basically what keeps the rotor still or the, the shoe assembly, the hub. All right, are you ready? All right. Good to go. Now, picture the drum being around this and the wheel spinning, and when you hit the brakes, it squeezes, stops the wheel, and now this thing can't just spin and pull the cables out. Because if that wasn't there, it'd be bad. So. I'm uh, we'll finish like we'll make sure it works and clears everything and then we'll weld it all up so it's nice and strong This time lapse to bring you problems with the lathe part four. 
We might fire it up again here in a second, but it's just been making a horrible noise. And we're not done with our brake drums yet. But you can see here's one, and I've been working on cutting it out and dropping it, but I basically turn the outside and the inside to get the run out, to get it true and straight. Then I was working on cutting it so it would drop and we could install it. But uh, it broke. It's kind of acting like it did before when the other one, remember the other one made funny noise? This noise is a little bit different than the other one, but if you think about it, it's almost acting the same as the other one did, isn't it? Yeah. She blowed up. So the digital phase shifter, uh, we blew up another one. So I uh, don't know, maybe this uh, electric motor, you had it checked and you said it was fine. Yeah. I wonder if it's drawing too many amps or something. You know, if you got too many amps being drawn by electric motor, you tend to pop things. He did recommend a rotary converter, but I don't know if we can afford one of those. Yeah. Well, I think rotary converter is more heavy duty. Yeah, but yeah. I'm wondering if this is too heavy duty for that. I, we're not electricians. I'm not an electrician. No. All I know is I, I uh, YouTubed it, and uh, according to What's the that? woman, yeah. According to the woman that I was watching, uh, yeah, we got a problem. So, two twelve swap it. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a motor plate down there. Well, Charles got the chain guard all finished up, and it looks fantastic. We had to redo the chain tensioner. Yeah, from that angle to uh, up and down. Yeah, it looks so. pretty good. It's gonna work. Oh yeah, just fine. So let's get this tire put on here. And now we're at the mercy of. What electric motor can I bring over so we can fix our lathe finally? Yeah. So we've had nothing but problems with that thing. Because we're so close to getting the uh, front brakes uh, figured out. Uh, we really need the drum, which we're, we're kind of at the mercy of the uh, lathe right now, uh, turning them drums to fit what we've got here. So right. uh, I, gu I guess we're going to have to figure out what's up with the uh, lathe, dude. Yep. Yep. Hi, everybody. This is what not to do with the lathe. <laughs> Actually, this is how I guess you uh, jerry-rig a 220 to a 110 lathe now. Yeah, it's going to be dual purpose. This is going to be a 330. Oh, man. So we're definitely going to disconnect it from the wall or whatever. And we're going to take, well, it doesn't matter. We're going to take the belts off that motor. So somehow we're going to get another V-belt. And we're going to spin this so we can spin the transmission of the lathe. Because I, I, that's right. I, I mean, wouldn't you call that? Yeah. Like that's the... Uh, because there's the motor, then the output shaft of the transmission, and then all your uh, ghibli bits there. So <sighs> seems like a real bad idea. Yep, and I mean, and you guys know electric motors. We can reverse the polarity, so whether which direction we need it to roll. Uh, and there's an arrow, so we need it to roll. What is that? Counterclockwise. That's it. All right. So, and I had the idea of let's just ratchet strap it on here with a belt that we already have. And a light switch. And a light switch. <laughs> and a wall plug. And a wall plug. So plug it into the wall and there's going to be a switch in between. So it's boom, Frankenstein. Oh boy. No switch. So it's just no switch, straight. Just straight plug in. Sh that's the switch. Okay. All right. We're going to get every fire extinguisher we have. <laughs> Look, I don't think a fire extinguisher is going to help when the, when the fire is in the wall. <laughs> All you do is put this thing in low. It's not That's right. Gonna, it's not going to lug the uh, the motor, and you just turn the transmission up until it seems like you found a happy spot. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. I'll go look for our V belts because I think we have some from All right. our alternator days. All right. Yeah. All you got to do is take that one belt off. Yeah. Because it probably won't even hurt to spin the old motor. I don't think it would. No. I mean, but we are spinning the old old motor. So, but you know, as you can see, I can spin it with hand with my hand. And the reason why I do that is because we have another belt down there that goes to the uh, oil pump. Oh yeah, we should probably yeah. We're gonna run it on this external one. Yeah. Whatever you do, do not do this at home. I repeat, <laughs> do not do this. So let's see. I've got like a motor plate with some washers holding that. Oh gosh, we're almost okay. Well, we're not, we're not gonna worry about that. That's fine. 
Um, but I got a ratchet strap. You know, if you can hear that, let's see. Yeah, that ain't going anywhere. Uh, B belt. Yeah, this is the only thing I'm worried about right down there. Back. Oh boy. But uh, what's worse is gonna happen. It's gonna jump off there. But uh, I got the, uh, the extension cord uh, wired in and secure. Now all we gotta do is uh, look at it. You wanna see this, John? Oh, okay. All right. Hopefully, we don't power surge you and you lose your call. This isn't on the same breaker, is it? Nah. No. Shouldn't be. Now, if the whole system goes down. All right, dude. All right. Ready? Yeah. It popped the fuse. Yeah, it was my call that was on. So, for y'all that. I don't know if y'all missed it but um yeah we blew the breaker blew the internet shut down john's computer while he was in the middle of an upload so uh and a conference call and a conference call so that was a uh, great now charles i'm plugged in across the shop yeah so we're on a different breaker all right uh, so i feel like clark griswold so what happened maybe well okay so i think uh, that black wire uh, was in the wrong spot. electrical Plug, well, it was wired up wrong, maybe. All right, ready? Yep. Hey! Is it spinning? Yeah! Yay! It's working! Is it spinning the right way? I mean, I, I... No! It's not, so we need to reverse the... We need to the... turn it around. No, we can just reverse the polarity on the, the two wires. Are you sure? Yeah, it's an electric motor. You can do that. That's DC voltage. Uh, I don't know if it works for AC voltage. Well, then heck, how the heck? I'm going to look it up. How are we going to turn that motor around? I'll, I mean, I'll wear the newest welding gloves. Not that that's going to stop electricity, but <laughs> it might stop the heat if the, if the wire glows red. Ready? Yeah. I knew it would work. <laughs> is it spinning the right way? Yes, it is. Okay. All right, let's see if the lathe works. All right. Oh. Holy cow. It, dude, and it doesn't sound like it's binding. It's not under load yet. Well, it's fixing to be. Hey, should we uh, unplug the mile long uh, extension cord and plug it into the wall? Yeah. Let me do that. Okay. Because it is bad to uh, on electric motors to be on a real long. No heat. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Belt oh. slips. Put some silicone spray on it, so it should be okay. All right. Let's build some brakes. Back in business. Alright, watch out. I said watch out. Unplug it. <laughs> uh, that's how to break a bit. That thing bounced off the wall over here. Yeah. Wait, that was a bit? That was a bit. Broke the bit. Broke the bit. Is this one we get yelled at by the machinists in the comments? Oh, yeah. well, they're gonna, we're getting yelled at for putting a 110 motor on this thing. So what I'm building is I'm building drums here. And these drums are going to attach to our spindles right there. Um, this is the smallest bongos I've ever I seen. I know, right? So uh, I've got to tack weld it in several places, then i got to put it back on the lathe and make sure everything's straight. Because we don't want a... Uh, Brake pulse? Yeah. So I'm gonna just tack it in like three places, and uh, we're gonna check it out. Cover. Precision. So now that we've got. Uh, 
uh, this thing centered up nice and even. We're going to punch a hole in it. Now, we don't have the right bit to punch the hole in it, so we're, we kind of improvised. We went to our road fab and we pulled out one of our little hole saws. I think it's an inch and uh, I don't know what size it is, but you know. Here we go. We're just going to do it. Wrong way. Put her in reverse, Terry. There we go. I got the three bolt holes drilled on this homemade drum and we also got it welded the whole way around. Now we're going to be putting it back in the lathe and we're going to be grinding down uh, all the welds to a more smooth, uh, better looking uh, drum. And then we're going to go back on the inside and we're going to touch up the inside just in case it might be a little wonky. So we'll be uh, cleaning that up. You're wonky. You're wonky. So we got the drum turned down on the lathe. I think it turned out pretty good. And we mounted it to our front spindle hubs. And uh, looks pretty good. Try it out. Hit the brakes. It works. So I'm pretty happy with this. What do you think? I like it. And then... Boom. Awesome. Sweet little setup. It works pretty good. A little, little self-clearing, no big deal. Yeah. Are we ready? I, I believe we are ready for a uh, our first test, sir. We've got the front wheels on. We have the brakes adjusted. Wow, they are kind of tight. Yeah, yeah, they are. I, I, I figured they'd kind of break in some. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, uh, and to be honest, in. yeah, there we go. And to be honest, the uh, drum on the left side is a little bit wonky. It's not exactly centered. My fault. For testing purposes. Yes, for testing purposes, ABS, the brake pulse, keep it from locking it up. So, uh, yeah, I believe we're ready. We lowered the gear ratio. We've changed the steering ratio. We added front brakes. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah, we're that's ready a for a rip. This, this thing ought to be, uh, if if it's not more pleasurable to ride, then, then I'm, my name's not Isaac. How's that? If it's not more pleasurable to ride. You have a ride, way with words. Oh, yeah. The steering's easier. It sounds easier. It's still going to be a workout, but, uh, We've lost some of our uh, turning radius. But, Why does it look know, like it steers farther to the right? Yeah, I think it does. <laughs> that is fine. Yeah. Uh, which we can fix that with an adjustment down there. Cool. So yeah, we can do that. But anyhow, let's let's try to fire this thing up. The choke is so lovely to get to. Choke is on. Ignition is on. I see fuel moving over the uh, fuel line. Any second. And
<laughs> I saw a spark when he left the belt. Just one little spark. Mystery like smoke from the muffler jump cut to this. He's a mad man. Alright, it's got it's smoking more. Huh? It's smoking a little bit more. Oh, okay, we're good. You cannot handle this thing. Really? Like the uh, the steering, I, there's hardly any steer. We're gonna have to do some adjusting. <laughs> I'm just like, All right, well, uh, I feel like it is faster. It looks so cool. I like yeah. it, dude. Hey, good job. All right. uh, you good missed job. a few spots in the yard, but I'll still give you 20 bucks there, kid. I was trying to I was trying to get it to spin around do a 180 Dude, and keep going. It would not let you do a 360. Something about Oh like, no, I, it'll do 360. Oh, oh it, but yeah. It was like something it's about so it, close. it violently like corrected you it's, or something. It's it, the uh, steering. That's I hey. feel like I could have done it but the steering so Don't worry about it. Just yeah. more RPM. Yeah. So pretty cool guys. I'm glad we I got like an air it. filter on it. Anybody want to try it? We look like you had some fun. For sure. Yeah. A little dusty. That's alright. A little dusty. Alright, well I'm gonna go down the road and check the top speed. Oh dear. Alright. I mean, it was like 50 before. It's gonna be like 70 now. Well, I gotta cool this thing off. split second nice i Woo. think i might have caught your panic face on camera <laughs> oh. hey that was awesome stops pretty good fellas it does That's yeah all right the tire locked up <laughs> so the brakes are working Alright. It's great. Now we ought to clean this thing up because it's got a show to go to. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. That's right. All right, guys, we made it. We're at the Wheels and Wings cruise in and fly in at the Washington Warren Airport. We've got a few of our projects, as you can see. Uh, I think there's a burnout competition. I'm not sure. Hopefully the throttle pedal's getting stuck on the mower, but that, that'll help me in the burnout competition. You know what I'm saying? So, but uh, let's hope, let's walk around, meet some fans. Ho I, you know, hopefully you guys are out here. If not, we'll make some more fans. I see some racing go-karts. That's a team over there. There's, there's some really nice cars. You, I'll, I'll flip the camera around and get you guys to see what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, we're here representing. Bandit, you're reckless. Look at this thing. Oh, he's got a hat. I love it. He's got a Burt Reynolds hat in there. I mean, you better. If you drive one of these, you, you better look like Burt Reynolds. Nitrous. You know, for, for it, it, it holds his scuba tank. Look, look who I found. Anything, any nice words for the camera? <laughs> for the camera? Hi John, guys. John can edit it out. <laughs> John, this one's for you, BMW. I know you probably don't like this one, but. I think they're gonna be doing some parachute. Look, 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 see, that's a, that's a wooden broom hand. That's That guy's a character. This is awesome. This thing is brand new. Like, it's perfect. 1973 Chevy Custom Deluxe. It's perfect. Look at it. It's perfect. These things are so cool. enough turnout or sign up for the actual burnout competition so there really wasn't a space for us to do anything they did let us run up and down the taxiway a little bit I did get to air this thing out just a tiny bit but I I didn't have a helmet so I couldn't mount the GoPro on there so it's you know if you guys are missing footage blame me I'm sorry I'm a, it's a one-man show today and I, I forgot a few things I, and I ran it out of gas Forgot the keys for the cozy coop, but all in all, we met plenty of fans and we had a good time. So thank you, and we'll see you soon. Sounds horrible. Yeah. So it rotates the direction cool. of the arrow. So, um, which guess what? A 212 would, if you mount it up here normally, that's the way it would uh, rotate.